If we're ready, I'll get us starting. I'd like to welcome everyone to our June 11, 2020 virtual meeting of the City Council. Tonight's council meeting is the fifth council meeting we are conducting using communication media technology as authorized by executive order of the governor during the current pandemic. We appreciate your patience and assure you that your city council remains committed to providing the public a fair and reasonable opportunity to participate in our council meetings. We sincerely appreciate your continued understanding as we work through this temporary manner of conducting meetings. To tonight's meeting participants, as the presiding officer, I request the following. I ask that each council member or designated staff member request that they be recognized by me before speaking. I will do my best to quickly recognize and call upon you. All participants should use the mute function and only unmute yourself when you seek to be recognized to speak and while you are speaking. Please remember that this meeting is being broadcast to the public and therefore we request that you eliminate any background distractions you may have at your location. Prior to the council taking final action on any agenda item, applicants or members of the public who are present in the public access area will be recognized to address the council. Applicants and members of the public who have pre-registered to address the specific agenda item through communications media technology will be recognized to address the council and email or written statements that have been timely submitted will be read into the record. The normal rules I stated earlier regarding public comments still apply. I would like to thank you for your cooperation and efforts to ensure this council meeting is conducted in the best interest of the city of St. Cloud. With that, I call this virtual meeting to order. Our invocation will be delivered by Pastor David Nye, pastor of the Christ Our Savior Fellowship Church. If we could stand together, after which we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Nye, thank you for being here. Let us pray. The Word of God states in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 10 and 11, when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Our Heavenly Father, this evening, we ask your blessing on the leaders of our community. We pray that you'd give them wisdom, direction, and guidance. Lord, we recognize that as a city, we can only prosper if we place ourselves under your care and seek to follow your will. And we ask that all authority that has been given to these individuals has been given to them by you. And we ask your blessing upon them. And we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of Pakistan, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Blackwell? Here. Deputy Mayor Matheny? Here. Councilmember Cooper? Here. Councilmember Askew? Here. Councilmember Trace? Here. We have a presentation this afternoon. We have an update regarding the economic development activities from October 219 through May the 31st. Uh, Antoinette, I believe you will be presenting the press, this presentation. The floor is yours. That is correct. Can everyone hear me? I think we can, yes ma'am. Perfect, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Good evening, Council. My name is Antoinette Forbes. I am the Economic Development and Special Projects Manager for the City of St. Cloud. 
My intent this evening is to offer you an update of activities from Economic Development Division and portions of the CRA uh, for quarters one, two, and three. They'll pre be presented in the form of a breakdown per quarter. So the information you see will be for three months at a time. So during the first quarter of October December, through December of 2019, there were a total of 120 new business registrations and three business assistance cases. And when I say business assistance cases, those are businesses that actively sought out assistance from the Economic Development Division in order to um, find out more information, whether it was to establish a new business or to find out about incentives or just to help maneuver through um, what is local government. I also provided a breakdown to tell you the types of new businesses that were established. Uh, one of the big presence that you'll see is that there is um, a big presence of what qualifies as other. And because our registration process is somewhat um, um, open and allows businesses to self-qualify on how they choose to um, select their industry, you'll see, you'll notice a pattern, there'll be a lot more quote unquote other businesses. However, if you take a deeper dive, you'll see most of them qualify under service and retail oriented. You'll also see during this presentation, it'll be broken down between business retention and business attraction. And that's because when you break down economic development, that is what the core of what we do. We retain and we attract businesses in order to retain and attract jobs. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And so when we talk about business retention, we are looking at existing businesses and how we can help them grow and prosper. So one of the first things that um, I attempted to do is to uh, reach out to our local businesses to let them know things that were going on. And so that's where you'll see the Find Your Place in the Cloud newsletter that goes out monthly. And that newsletter allows businesses um, to know what's going on, not just from a municipal level, but things that are happening in the local economy that may um, be advantageous to them or affect them as a business owner. We also established a dial-in text number for businesses to join our mailing list if they text ECODEV, E-C-O-D-E-V, to 22828 in order to automatically enroll into that newsletter. That also is the same enrollment that allows our special alerts that have been going out in reference to COVID-19 assistance. Additionally, we started what we called our business walk campaign, and that's where we partnered with our resource providers with the uh, Small Business Development Center, with the chamber, with career source and others, and went door to door to some of our local businesses so that we can get to know them and they can also know what resources were available to them. You see the picture below is where we met with Osceola Air who were already chamber members, but they were unaware of different incentives that the city had offered. And so we did a total of um, four businesses during that business walk campaign, and it's something that we intend to continue quarterly. Under the business attraction piece for the first quarter, we also did a business first incentive report. And that was from a survey that was done of our local businesses. We surveyed over 1,000 businesses and had a 10% sample population. And the point of that survey was 20 questions was to find out more information about our businesses so that we can ascertain if the programs that we have in place are able to help them grow. We also wanted to find out what new, if any, programs needed to be formulated in order to help through the entire growth cycle of that business. Some interesting things came out of that report, um, mainly is that besides the fact that we have a lot of small businesses and by small, not the SBA, um, uh, formula, which is 500 employees or less, but more, less than 10 employees. And while I kind of figured that, one of the things that was, was truly interesting is that the majority of our businesses did not offer online presence, not in the form of marketing or in the form of e-commerce. And we'll see that that comes back um, as an issue now that we're in the middle of a pandemic that local businesses needs to make their presence known to further than a five mile radius. Additionally, in business attraction, we had a contract with CoStar, which is a commercial real estate database, which allows not only us, but end users to come onto our, our website and find properties that are immediately available for lease or for sale. 
It also allows us to pull real-time reports for site selectors and real estate developers and investors who are interested in knowing specific real estate market information. I also was featured in the Capital Analytics Magazine, um, which uh, offers a, a statewide um, drill down of economic activities where it spotlights local um, municipalities and what economic um, programs they have available to attract new business. We were featured with the city of Kissimmee. For the second quarter, which is January through March 2020, there were 198 new business registrations. And once again, you see that the majority of registrations were they classified under the other category. There were 22 business assistance cases. This is when we started revving up and really um, started reaching out to the businesses. And more importantly, the businesses started reaching out to us because they now had a portal um, of, of, of a conduit rather of how to get in touch with us, of, of information. So the business walks, the newsletters, you know, making ourselves present um, and, and doing one-on-one -on -one meetings really help businesses establish a sense of trust and come to us first um, as a way as a liaison between the city and their business. Under business retention, we started our first event, which was the culinary bicycle tour, which the mayor and vice mayor attended. We had over 50 people participate and um, eight businesses, local businesses participate in that event. It was definitely a, su a success and something we plan to continue on an annual, if not biannual basis. Um, you know, we also did this for twofold, not just because events allow the community to come together, but it also allows the community to patronize our local businesses. Many community um, residents who may have heard or not heard of those businesses had a firsthand opportunity to experience those restaurants. And there were quite a few people that said that they were going to return back that day, that evening, in order to purchase food for dinner. Also under business retention, we partner with the Downtown Business Association for the monthly markets, where under the city, city's guidance, we um, want to create this into a much bigger uh, event, which includes you know, um, uh, live entertainment, and that also spills over into the local district, excuse me, the entertainment district overlay amendment, which will um, allow a little bit more a leeway for businesses in order to attract um, a, a larger population because it incorporates um, open container use. For business attraction, this is where we start seeing the hints of the COVID-19, where we had a bankers roundtable scheduled for March the 9th, excuse me, the 18th, where we had speakers from the Small Business Administration, the Federal Depository Insurance Corporation, the Office of Comptroller of Currency, to speak about what is happening in the current state of affairs for the, the local economy. They also were going to advise us of successful models of how um, um, other, excuse me, successful models of how other communities have been able to use public par private partnerships in order to create huge redevelopment opportunities. Unfortunately, attendance started to uh, stall the closer we got to um, what became the stay-at-home order. Also under business attraction, we had scheduled our annual economic development summit. Last year was the first year, and we have an intention to continue on with that. We had um, confirmed over 25 speakers to speak on regional competitiveness, workforce development, um, you know, um, the role of utilities and incentives and private developers and uh, technical education. And so at that, we had easily over, I believe, 150 confirmed um, attendees. And unfortunately, we had to postpone again because of the pandemic. But is it, it is our intention to bring that back. And the intention behind that, just um, for everyone's edification, is to spotlight, spotlight St. Cloud specifically. What our unique assets are as far as business attraction? What makes people... Uh, not just move here to live here, but what makes them want to set up a business here? We have some unique assets that we, you know, can sometimes only be explained by scene. And so it is our intention to bring that event back. Also under business attraction for the second quarter, uh, we started our 
uh, Business Attraction newsletter. This newsletter is specifically geared to site selectors and real estate de developers, financiers, investors. And this one is more about why, uh, what makes St. Cloud a great place to relocate their business. So it features um, articles that's more specific to incentives. It, speak, uh, it speaks to um, workforce and talent attraction. I've also been working with our um, business navigator on the business startup guide. This will help new, new and small businesses existing as well as entrepreneurs. Um, how do they navigate through what is municipal um, government in order to create a sustainable business model? And then we um, also served as, um, what is the word I'm looking for? I've lost my word I would like to say. We've also served, uh, we also assisted in terms of the Mac Overlay Project to offer assistance in terms of guidance on creating um, uh, an economic strategy that would create a more conducive environment for uh, a medical arts campus. On the third quarter, which is March through June 2020, we had 28 new business registrations. And this is where we see the COVID-19 really start to sink in and effect. We only have four um, cases of business assistance. So that brings us to where we are as far in our third quarter. In our third quarter, it became all about our COVID-19 economic stimulus and recovery plan, which you all have heard of at this point. Um, but I will give a very short snapshot, snapshot for anyone who may be listening. Um, it is $1.25 million technical financial assistance plan, which it comes in three phases. The first phase offers financial assistance to local businesses up to $10,000, depending on the number of employees, to help them with working capital and operations that promote uh, business continuity. The second phase will include fee waivers for certain building municipal services. And then the third phase will include post-recovery primarily technical assistance and some financial to help businesses with the last leg get over that hump um, to keep their business on track and help them re-pivot um, and create more business resiliency. Also, I work with procurement on the local vendor preference, which really promotes, again, that economic sustainability when we talk about helping businesses um, stay afloat. And one of the best ways we as not just an employer, but also a large um, provider of goods and services should also help our local businesses in the procurement of those goods and services. The outdoor seating ordinance um, was also, as well as the, excuse me, the temporary signage um, executive order also promoted um, economic development that I helped our businesses create a new business model in order to accommodate for reduced uh, seating capacity I also work with the uh, county on the Osceola Back to Work Task Force. And that task force was a collaborative effort between Osceola County and the city of the semi uh, marketing campaign to promote businesses, not only to reopen, but to reopen safely using preventative and um, safe measures in order to get customers in, but also to protect their employees. To date, we've had um, over 100 businesses that have downloaded the poster and are um, displaying it in their um, store facades. And then lastly, the Open for Business social media campaign, which should be more called more of an economic development branding campaign. And that's because one of the biggest things I noticed um, from the first quarter is that many businesses, um, you know, they had, they were not aware of the services that economic development can help or what they can, what we can do to provide for them, even if it's just access to information. And so it was important for us to, as staff, to be able to put our face out there, put our words, our money where our mouth is, and say, listen, we are supportive of our local businesses. And so that campaign is a weekly social media post at this point that shows a department director level or higher with the quote that promotes the buy local as well as the we open safely campaign that is part of a larger comprehensive economic development marketing campaign that includes um, video vignettes um, and factoids in various uh, media portals 
Up next, uh, our goal is to redevelop the economic development website. You know, one of the biggest things that site selectors look for when they are looking for um, a place to locate their business before they call you, they are looking at our website. So it needs to be a, a more streamlined and cleaner and user friendly and offer the exact information that they're looking for. And so we have put in, um, we've started doing the scope of work um, in order to get the RFP out, and we hope to have that out within the next quarter, as well as the hotel feasibility study be, um, to make sure that as we look at recruiting potential hoteliers or at least one hotelier in our city, that we have the um, data to back up the amount of consumers um, that would patronize that business. Additionally, we need to leverage our opportunity zones. Uh, we partnered with Main Street in the second quarter to, um, to host their Opportunity Zones um, seminar. And we'd like to take the momentum from that and be able to include a, a form of outreach to um, site selectors that includes those particular site, opportunity sites within the Opportunity Zones that would be good for a potential relocation. It's also to be noted that since the um, feds just pushed back the 180 day requirement to reinvest their capital gains to July 15th, this is something that we can use to our advantage when we are promoting um, St. Cloud's Opportunity Zones. And then lastly, as I've specified, you know, the rescheduling of our Bankers Roundtable and Economic Summit is something that we need to look at when it's most advantageous, um, not only to us as staff, but also to our panelists and intended end users, the attendees. So that's just a snapshot of some of the things that we have been working on. Um, I am open for any questions. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the presentation, but even more so all of the initiatives and the work that uh, you have done to help spur and to encourage local businesses and uh, development of, uh, of businesses. I've heard so many good things about what you're doing. Mr. Askew, Councilman Askew, do you have something you'd like to say? Uh, I would like to um, repeat basically what you said, but also in the community, I'm hearing great things about the economic development and um, internet and things that she's doing. So it's, she's kind of quiet. She does her own little thing and then shows up with this little presentation. You're like, wow. Okay. So um, I'm, um, I appreciate all the work she's doing and definitely helping out the businesses. So, congrats. Yes, excellent. Councilmember Matheny. Thank you. I agree. She's doing a great job, and you know, economic development is not my forte. So I appreciate all of her expertise. But I, there's one critique I have on her presentation. It could have been better if I had made the cut for the photos of the bike tour. <laughs> <laughs> We'll let you do a photo op later. <laughs> well, I was moving too fast. That's why I didn't make the cut. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> uh, anyways, and I like Dave's haircut. It looks like Dave's had a haircut since the last time I've seen him. So great job. Looking good, Dave. Anyone else? Uh, Council Member Trace. Thank you. Um, yep. Uh, same comments. Um, great job as always on all uh, fronts of economic development. And then uh, great goals for next quarter. Um, just let us know when those um, that bankers round table and some of those other events happen. And um, I think you'll have some good attendance from us and others in the community. Excellent. Mayor, be recognized? Yes, you may. Thank you. I just, again, I want to share your sentiments. Uh, we're very lucky to have Ms. Forbes, Mrs. Forbes, excuse me, internet. Um, I've heard nothing but kudos from the leadership team at the county, city of Kissimmee and our chamber. So we're lucky to have her and she's doing a great job. Very good, thank you. Thank you. With that, we come to our next agenda item, which is our citizens forum. Any person who desires to comment on any item not on this agenda is provided this opportunity to address the city council. Each person is requested to complete a signing form to be provided to the presiding officer prior to or as soon as is practical thereafter the person addresses the council or via electronic means. Madam Clerk, is anyone uh, wishing to address the city council? 
I had no one to sign up and I have no one in the chambers. Thank you very much. Then we'll move to our consent agenda. The next portion of tonight's meeting is the consent agenda, which contains items that have been determined to be routine and non-controversial. If anyone wishes to address a particular item on the consent agenda, now is the opportunity for you to do so. Additionally, if staff or members of the city council uh, wish to speak on a consent item, they have the same opportunity. First of all, is there anyone on the council that is wanting to uh, speak to a particular item? Madam Clerk, is there anyone in the uh, chamber or online that's wanting to speak to the consent agenda? I had um, two that sign up for item D, resolution 2020-149R. I have Joe Thacker and Luke Besson. Okay. And I think they're on our in our attendees. Okay. Are they wishing to speak to these items? That's what they have said on their registration. Well, they here just answer questions. Well, Mayor, if I may. Yes, you may. It's consent agenda items. So unless it's removed from the agenda for discussion, then that would be the time that they would, uh, they would, uh, address it since they are the applicants. Okay. Are they requesting to pull that from the agenda to speak to item D? I don't think are they, no. No, no, sir. Thank you. Mr. Trace, are you wanting to speak to an item? Yeah, um, there was a Scribner's error on item L. I believe all those minutes um, are from meetings in 2019. Um, so that's just an update and then, uh, Bill, if you could just go through on item B, something we discussed during the briefing, I just wanted to kind of put it out there. Uh, the items you guys are um, uh, applying for on the grant um, for the like PPE, um, I just kind of wanted uh, everyone to know kind of what you guys are uh, applying for and just um, some of the programs that are out there to help with PPE for, through COVID. Sure, Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes, you may. Yes, thank you, Mr. Trace. Yes, uh, we're applying for a grant. Um, we're getting a our aeroclave. It's a system that helps sanitize some of our areas and also a light-based system and additional protective equipment through this grant. Thank you very much. Ms. Matheny, are you wanting to speak to an item? Yes, please. Um, I wanted to pull item number E as an elephant for discussion. All right, we'll pull it now then. We'll okay, <laughs> thanks. I just wanted to give kudos to uh, Miss Holcamp and her crew for getting this um, permit from the Army Corps to go out and do maintenance dredging while we've got the lake levels drawn down for the um, vegetation removal. It, it, and Keith, Keith will be able to appreciate this. It's not easy getting a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. I mean, it's it's not an easy task. And I know when we started contemplating this drawdown a couple of years ago, you know, I had I had requested, hey, make hay while the sun shines. If there's any projects we need to do, if there's any maintenance that needs to be done, any culverts that need to be replaced, you know, now's the time to do it. They definitely, you know, pulled a rabbit out of the hat with this one. So I think that's going to be fantastic um, for all the voters. And um, I just think kudos to them. I just wanted to kind of give them some props. That's all. Very good. Are there any other questions or comments by council regarding the consent agenda? Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda with the updates to item L. Second. Second. Do we have a motion from council member trace a second from council member ask you for the approval of the consent agenda with the corrections of item l on the dates madam clerk you please call the roll deputy mayor Matheny. aye council member cooper aye council member ask you aye council member trace Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. That brings us to 
Item number eight under public hearings. Uh, item number one, Madam Clerk, would you please read? Final public hearing for ordinance number 2019-45, an ordinance of the city council of the city of St. Cal, Florida, closing, vacating, and abandoning portions of utility easement located in the property located east of LaSalle Avenue, west of Packard Avenue, north of Pine Tree Drive, specifically described in the body of this ordinance, providing for severability, conflicts, and effective date. Mr. Okay. Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes, you may, Andre. Thank you. It's Andre Anderson, the Community Development Director. This is the uh, adoption of ad abandonment of easement. However, the applicant requested to have this item continued to a date certain of July 23rd, 2020, which is the next <coughs> second to next city council meeting. And um, part of the reason is they had an obligation to complete some certain items and they're not completed yet. They're working diligently to have that completed Per the instructions from the city council at a prior meeting. Okay, are there any objections to moving this to continuing this item to uh, July 23rd? Do we need a motion for that, please? Motion to continue ordinance 2019-45 to July 23rd. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Trace, second by Councilmember Cooper for the continuance of this item to July 23rd. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Councilmember Askew? Aye. Councilmember Trace? Mr. Aye. Trace, you're muted. Aye. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Matheny. Um, I, but I wanted to make a comment. Um, when this comes back, if we could modify the agenda to actually put the disposition of what was requested, it wasn't in this version. It just says we asked for stuff, but then it didn't say they did it, didn't do it, what was done, if we could add that to the agenda, but it's an aye for me. Mayor Blackwell. Aye, Mr. Sturgeon. Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, we, we have those notes, Deputy Mayor, and we'll make sure that's in there to detail that out for the council. Thank you very much. Brings us to item number two. Madam Clerk, will you please read that? First reading an introduction for ordinance number 2020-20. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, known to the St. Cloud Housing Assistance <laughs> Program and Trust Fund, providing for re renaming Chapter 18 Economic Development Incentives, heading to be known as community development, providing for insertion of affordable housing assistance program and trust fund, providing for renumbering the, of the economic development incentive section, providing for the establishment of affordable housing assistance program, providing for the establishment of the local housing assistance trust fund, providing for the local housing assistance plan, providing for the administration of the local housing assistance plan, providing for certain for creation of the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee, members, powers, and duties, and review procedures, providing for conflicts and providing for effective date. May I be recognized? Yes, you may, Mr. Anderson. Thank you again, Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. <clears throat> this is Ordinance 2020 20 and is the first reading. It is to establish the Housing Assistance Program and Trust Fund. Um, back in 2018, the city accepted the offer to be an entitlement city status. And basically what that means is that the city had reached a certain threshold of 50,000 or more um, residents and as such became an entitlement city under the HUD guidelines and was therefore able to receive community development block grant funds from HUD. <clears throat> as part of being able to receive these funds, we are also entitled to also receive funds from the SHIP program, which is the State Housing Initiatives Partnership Program. And we are entitled to receive $512,171. This program is authorized under by what's called the Sadowski Affordable Housing Act that was established back in 1992. And this act established a trust fund that is 
um, funded by the dock stamps on deeds for sale of uh, residential property. This program is administered by the Florida Housing Finance Corporation and the purpose, overall purpose of the housing assistance program is to generate partnerships that will produce and preserve affordable home ownership and multifamily housing. And this is geared towards very low, low and moderate income families. The next steps in establishing this program is to, of course, adopt the ordinance 2020-20, which would establish the housing assistance program and also create the local housing trust fund where we would accept the funding from the state. In addition to doing all of this, we also will need to adopt a three-year local housing assistance plan or LHAP and also establish within the next year an affordable housing advisory committee. This committee would be charged with developing an incentive strategies report that is, that is due within 12 months of, of establishing this committee. These strategies would include things such as looking at our existing land development code and, in, and removing any barriers to providing affordable housing. It would also look at um, all the publicly owned lands that may be eligible for affordable housing development. Again, this is a requirement of the housing trust program that would occur within 12 months of establishing the committee. The Once this ordinance is adopted, we would then submit this to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation sometime in June, July timeframe, and then we would be able to then begin the program as soon as the funding is approved. So this ordinance is again to establish the housing trust fund and the program and the parameters under which the affordable housing committee will be established. This ordinance is consistent with our economic development strategic goal, as well as our growth management strategic goal, and staff would recommend approval of ordinance 2020-20. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, if you'll stand by. Is there anyone in the chamber or online to speak to this item, Madam Clerk? I have no one in the audience and no one has registered to speak on this. Thank you. Then we'll have discussion under motion by council. Councilman Raskin. Councilman Raskin has a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Trace. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Councilmember Askew. Aye. Councilmember Trace. Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Big aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. That brings us to the first item under council action. Madam Clerk, would you please read? Resolution number 2020-133R, a resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, amending fiscal year 2019-2019. 2023 five-year consolidated plans for fiscal year 2019 annual action plan and citizens participation plan for the community development block grant program providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date thank you may be recognized anderson. thank you andre anderson community development director this is resolution 2020-133r it is an amendment to our existing 2019-2023 um, consolidated plan and annual action plan and also our citizen participation plan. And it is being done as a result of the CARES Act funding that's been made available to local governments across the country. Um, around um, in March 27, the CARES Act, of course, was signed into law, and it was 
geared towards providing assistance to communities to do three things, to prevent, prepare, and respond to COVID-19. There were um, three different pots of money. There was a $2 billion direct allocation that was based on the regular formula for how CDBG money is allocated to local governments, 30% to states and 7% to entitlement communities, such as City of St. Cloud. Then there's also another billion dollar um, that was also allocated under the new formula that was allocated primarily just to states. And then there is also a third allocation of direct allocation that is still, is still yet to be determined. The estimated funding that is being allocated to the city of St. Cloud is $198,898. Uh, further background on this is that in order to accept this funding, we will need to do a substantial amendment to our five-year consolidated plan and also an amendment to our 2019 annual action plan. This, um, these actions, of course, are geared towards low to moderate income, meaning persons that are receive, that have an income of eight, 80% of less of the area, area median income, and it applies to individuals, households, and neighborhoods. And some of the eligible uses of this funding would be for public improvements and facilities, for residential rehab, for public services, and also for economic development. This is a breakdown of the sources of funding that, that we've been allocated and um, how it is proposed to be used. So we received the CDBG funding for 2019 of $319,076. And then with the CARES Act funding of an additional $198,898, we are now at a total of $517,974 for the 2019 um, funding year. Um, you will see the first six items are what currently exists in our current um, um, 2019-2023 consolidated plan. And items seven through 10 are the uh, programs that would be utilizing the CARES Act funding. Um, and you'll see that in each instance, there is an administration allocation of 20% that we are able to utilize for administration of the program. The three programs that we have added is one is for public services for approximately 99,449. And, and this is funding that we are hoping to utilize directly with the Parks and Recreation Department to uh, provide assistance in, in, in terms of um, providing PPE and other um, resources related to preventing, protecting against COVID-19. We also have allocated funds for economic development. And again, this will be additional funds that we can utilize in, as part of our economic recovery and stimulus plan. And then the final item is also, again, for public facilities improvements. And this, again, relates to things that we can do to provide um, better protection against the spread of COVID-19. So um, as far as the provisions, um, it ex the, 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 the stat, the HUD requirements has extended the deadline for when local governments can submit for this funding for both FY19 as well as FY2020. And we have essentially until August 16th of 2021 to actually submit for these funding. But of course, we're doing it now um, rather than wait um, given that extended deadline. It also suspends the cap on public services. Typically, when you receive CDBG funding, there is a cap on how much can be utilized for public services. They have in fact suspended it for this round of funding. In addition, they have also um, reduced the comment period to only five days for which a public can comment on this amendment. And also HUD 
also suspended the requirement for in-person public hearings. And in addition, they also have let themselves uh, some leeway to um, waive additional program requirements as the need dictates. Um, one thing that I neglected to mention at the beginning of this presentation is that this meeting will serve as a public hearing to receive public comment under the guidelines of HUD. And so uh, it's published on our website, it's published in, in public locations, and so, and so, and we have a copy of this document available to the public should they wish to um, review it. Um, the next steps in, in this process is to, uh, to, to essentially open the common period, which starts today, June 11th, through June 25th, when we would ask the council to take final action. As I said, this is a public hearing, and today we constitute the first public hearing on this item. Um, as far as the submission date, that will be determined once we have adopted this item, and then the program will start as soon as HUD approves the amendment. This amendment is consistent with our economic development and growth management strategic goals and staffs recommends approval of resolution 220-133R. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I also have with me online our consultant Eric Chatham from Civitas that's also available to answer any questions that I'm unable to answer. Would the consultant like to speak to this item? Hi, good evening. Eric Chatham with Civitas. Um, I'm, I'm here to answer questions, but I believe uh, Andre has made the full presentation. So happy to answer questions, but have no uh, additional comments. Thank you, Mr. Chatham. Madam Clerk, is there anyone in the chamber or online who has requested to speak to this item? I have no one in the chamber and Mr. Chatham's the only one that had registered to speak. Thank you very much. Then we'll have discussion and or motion by council. Well, Mayor, if I may. Yes, you may, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. So this, this, this is actually the first of two public hearings. So you don't need it it's different from an ordinance where you have to actually approve introduction of first reading. So you do, need, do not need action tonight, only to call for public input and have the public hearing. So uh, if he, so really the final action will be at the June 25th meeting. All right, so we don't need to act on this then. No, sir. All right, would anyone like to speak to this item? Councilman Rescue, are you oh, on to speak? Uh, um, other than thank um, Mr. Anderson and his uh, department and team, um, along with the uh, consultant, this is a big um, paperwork uh, to get this done. So I appreciate everything that they're doing there. And I think this is truly going to help our citizens. Uh, in I agree. Councilmember Trace. Councilmember Trace, are you wanting to speak to this item or are you froze up? Mayor, I believe he's frozen. It looks that way. Would anyone else on the council like to speak to this item? If not, we will move forward to item number two. Madam Clerk, will you please read resolution number 202134R? Resolution number 2020. Uh, Dave's comments as well. Yeah, anything that has to do with the feds ends up taking 10 Fine. times as much paperwork. Uh, I think you've frozen. Got, thank you. You're we got most what? of that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I can hear you. Want to keep speaking? If not, we're going to move on to the next item. Madam Clerk, will you please read. Resolution number 2020-134R, a resolution of the City Council of City St. Cloud, Florida, making findings approving the local housing assistance plan, LHAP, required by the state housing in Initiatives Partnership Ship Action Program Act, subsequent subsections 
420.907-420.907-9, Florida Statutes and Rule Chapter 67-37, Florida Administrative Code, authorizing directing the mayor to execute any necessary documents and certifications needed by the state, authorizing the submission of the LHAP to review the approval of the floor, by the Florida Housing Finance Committee, FHFC, providing for the conflicts and effective date. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Be, be recognized, please. Mr. Anderson, it's your night. <laughs> Thank you. Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. This is the companion piece to the ordinance that you recently just approved on first reading regarding the local housing assistance program. And I won't go through it again. It's essentially the same thing. It's the same funds, uh, but this is now the actual three-year local housing assistance plan or LHAP that is required to be uh, prepared uh, as part of receiving SHIP funds from the state. So as I said, this is a three-year local housing assistance plan and we are proposing five housing strategy uh, initially. Uh, again, the funding is not great, but it will provide assistance in, in, in a few areas. One area is purchase assistance without rehab, and that is to provide assistance to very low, low and moderate income households to assist them with purchasing a home. There's also owner re owner occupied rehab. Again, that is providing a certain level of assistance in order to rehabilitate their existing homes. We also will um, provide some assistance regarding disaster assistance, and that is to assist homeowners during hurricane. And of course, we're now in the hurricane season, so we would like to be able to utilize these funds to assist individuals in the unfortunate instance of um, home damage. Then there's also rental assistance. This is assistance that's provided directly to tenants to avoid eviction or assist with getting folks to remain in their homes. And then there's also rapid rehousing. And rapid rehousing essentially is uh, a program to assist both on a short-term and a long-term basis to help keep folks from being homeless. Um, this all has, again, has to be approved by the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. And part of this will also include the local housing trust fund, which would be established as part of the ordinance that you just approved. And again, we'll also have the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee being part of this program that will provide um, information on, on incentives that the city needs to look at. And the three that I have listed here are ones that are typically done by most local governments across the state and are ones that we would also look at doing as well. One is expedited permitting for infill housing and, and affordable housing. And then also look at our, our current, current review process to see whether or not there are opportunities for streamlining it and also ensuring that, there, that, that we move any barriers to providing affordable housing. And then the final item, of course, as I said previously, was to look at an inventory of all the public lands and see what's available or what's suitable for converting to affordable housing opportunities. This is a breakdown of the um, LHAP funding that we would do. And as I mentioned, purchase assistance without rehab is about 25% of the funding at 130,000. Then owner occupied rehab and demolition um, reconstruction is 33% at 170,000. Disaster assistance about 20% at 104,954. Rental assistance to tenants accounts for about 4% at 20,000. And rapid rehousing about 7% of the funding or $36,000 for a total of 112,171, which also includes a 10% for general administration of this program. The next steps in the pro in this activity is to um, open this up also for a public comment period between June 11th and June 25th. So again, this um, first meeting is will serve as a public hearing to receive public comment. Um, in addition to this, we'll also will need to adopt Ordinance 220-20, which establishes the Housing Assistance Program and the Local Housing Trust Fund. Again, we will submit this to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation sometime in June, end of June, July, and then the program will start immediately as, as, as soon as the Florida Housing Finance Corporation approves this 
program. It is consistent with our economic development strategy, strategic goals, as well as our growth management strategic goals. Staff recommends approval, and there is no action that's required of the council tonight, simply to, as, as, as the city attorney mentioned before, to solicit and ask for public comment. And the final action will be on June 25th, 2020. And that's all I have. Thank you. Is there anyone in the chamber or online that has requested to speak to this item? I have no one in the chambers. And again, I have Mr. Eric Chatham that has signed up. To answer questions, I hope. Okay. Is, uh, are there any comments or questions from uh, council? If not, it has been read into the record. We'll move on to item number three. Madam Clerk, will you please read resolution number 2021-47R. Resolution number 2020-147R, a resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, approving a water and wastewater service agreement from DCR Ventures, LLC, for commercial development named Lake Nona Dental Group, located in the unincorporated areas of Osceola County on the east side of Narcusi Road, north of Jones Road, south of Jack Brack Road, and west of Underwood Avenue, authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement and providing an effective date. Thank you. Mr. Anderson, are you going to speak to this? Actually, be Miss. No, Craig. Mr. Mayor. That is, <laughs> that's Miss Craig. Craig. Oh, Miss Craig. Miss Craig, are you ready? Maybe. She is. I can't tell if she's muted or not. I show her muted. Not muted now. Okay. Ms. Ms. Gray, are, are you available? you want me to speak to it? Yes, go ahead, Brian. Mr. Wheeler, I'd be good. This is uh, your standard water and wastewater uh, agreement for this uh, small uh, dental commercial piece of property located up on the north end of Narcusi Road. Uh, it has all your all standard conditions for this type of uh, development. Uh, any questions I can answer related to it? Okay. Madam Clerk, is there anyone in the audience? Or I do not have anyone the, in the audience, but I do have the applicant. Would the applicant like to speak to this item? Uh, he had noted that only if you have any questions of him. All right, thank you. If there's no other comment, we'll open up for discussion and or motion by council. Motion to approve resolution 2021-47R. Second. 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 We have a motion from Councilmember Trace, a second from uh, Deputy Mayor Matheny. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? <clears throat> Councilmember Trace. Aye. Deputy Mayor Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Councilmember Askew? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. This time we'll hear from our city attorney, Mr. Menzares. Do you have anything for us? Just to remind you, and thank you, Mayor, that uh, some of you have signed up for the June 18th uh, presentation uh, for the being put on by the League of Cities related to the ethics training, and hopefully you can attend. I have checked repeatedly. And the League of Cities University is not offering any additional dates. So uh, if you can't make that date, which we would encourage you to do, because uh, the last few years you've listened to us speak about this, and that's fine. Uh, but it, it, sometimes it's good to hear some other folks speak. So we'd encourage you to attend on June 18th. If you can't and, you, and we need to make alternative arrangements, 
uh, before the end of the month when that has to be done, uh, we can happily do that. The materials that we presented and we've provided in previous years are still fresh and still and still good materials. So you could listen to those if uh, if you can't make the June 18th meeting uh, to meet your compliance. So, <clears throat> you have anything else for us? No, sir. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions about the ethics training? Mr. Sturgeon. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a brief statement. Um, as you all know, for the last three and a half months, our nation has been in a pandemic and the last two weeks, the nation is really hurting. Talking about inclusion, equity, and diversity across the nation. And Monday, I committed to my employees that us as a team, we're gonna work towards a more equitable, inclusive, and diverse workforce and community. And I wanna reaffirm that commitment to the city council tonight in public, that if my team is gonna work really hard at that and make it sustainable, not just talk about it and make it sustainable. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have anything else? Is that it? That's it, sir. Thank you. Councilmember Trace. Thank you. That just, um, all's good. Thank you. Councilmember Cooper. Thank you. Mr. Sturgeon, can you tell me where we at on the uh, music down at the New York Avenue? You're getting closer to getting that started? Actually, we're having a hard time finding a vendor that wants to put in a Wi-Fi system, so we've had to go back out and look for a wired system. I hope that came across. We wanted to do wireless. We're having a hard time finding a vendor to do that. Um, they all want to do wired, so we're going to have to go back and redraw that up. And we're working on that right now. Okay. Will that be back for the next meeting? Um, Leslie, are you on? I don't know if Leslie Flores, I don't know where she's at specifically. I don't think she's on tonight. I will get you an answer, Mr. Cooper. I don't have that answer right now. That, that's my intent. I know they're working. Oh, is that your? Yeah, so I'm here. Okay. I had a hard time. Sorry. So actually, the RFP is out on the street. Um, we had a pre-bid meeting in which we received a ton of questions from a lot of vendors. We had some pretty good input. Um, we just finished answering the questions yesterday. We, I believe we posted them out to the vendors. So um, we're, we're getting close. Okay. I can look up the bid due date right now. Give me one second. Oh, sorry, my computer's not working. Um, but I can, I can forward that to you and let you know when the RFP is due. Sure, that would be fine. Okay. Mr. Mayor, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Cooper. Councilmember Matheny. Thank you. Um, I understand that the city received the 60% plans for the downtown revitalization. Would you be able to share those with um, council? I guess that's to Mr. Sturgeon. Absolutely. We, we certainly do that. We'll get that to the council. Okay, great. Um, second, I got a request from a community leader um, about a um, longstanding family that's been in the community and they recently had a death. Um, Mr. Bradley Chisholm recently passed away. And so I was reached out to by the um, a representative for the widow and they're asking if there was a way that we could do some kind of acknowledgement, maybe name the trail out at Chisholm Park, like the Bradley Chisholm Trail. Um, you know, all that Chisholm Park land was their family's land. In fact, their homestead was um, what's the bait shop now. Um, Ralph Chisholm has a field named after him at St. Cloud High School. I mean, so they're a really um, longstanding family in the community. Um, I'll tell you some of the stuff they told me. He served as an Osceola County deputy, um, loved and respected by friends, family, and community. The land that is now Chisholm Park and where the McCormick Horse Institute is all land that the Chisholm, that was Chisholm property. And um, he unfortunately passed away um, early, earlier than he should have. And so they're just asking if there was a way that we could acknowledge him on the, the suggested idea was the trail. I know our trail has complications since the county vacated the South Lake Avenue right away. Um, I did talk with Stephanie and as you all I'm sure know and have taken the survey, 
that the Chisholm Park master plan is underway right now and it's supposed to be done by the end of the year. So I was thinking maybe they could contemplate some way to um, recognize Mr. Chisholm. I don't know if the city has a process um, when a request like this comes in, like a vetting the name or, you know, I, I don't really know what the process is, but I wanted to reach out to the other council members to see if you were open to the idea. I certainly don't have a problem with that. They certainly have been a, a significant family name in this community for many, many years. And uh, Mr. Trace, would you like to speak? Yes, I'm good with it as well. I imagine we have some sort of policy about naming facilities as long as it would follow all that. Yes, we do. Council Member Askew. So is that a way, I'm sorry, did Council, I just- Council Member Askew, please. Would you like to speak? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, we have Dan Terrell, the little um, jetty that kind of goes out there. And I think it was um, Miss um, Matheny that, that came up with the idea of adding a um, something, not an island, but something to the Chisholm Park. Are they still planning on that? And that, that area could actually be called that as well. You know the, the place I'm talking about, uh, Debbie Mayor? So I don't know that. I don't know what that's going to look like. I haven't I've been out there a couple weeks ago, but I didn't see anything that's seems to be growing just yet. <laughs> well, my my suggestion of doing the similar um, functionality as Dan Terrell, it, they're not doing it. There, you'll, there'll be a jetty out there, but there's not going to be a trail on top of it because they just okay. didn't design it that way. So I, I'm just wondering if maybe, I'm sure Stephanie or Ms. Holcamp and her crew could come up with something creative if, if we could go through whatever the process is um, for naming stuff in the city. I'm all for it, though. Councilmember Cooper, are you wanting to speak to this item? Yes, Noel. Yes, sir. I don't have a problem with that. I do have another another gentleman. As uh, his name is Ray Sturgeon, and I had talked to City Manager Bill Sturgeon, <laughs> not related, but uh, this gentleman is um, the 26th of June is going to be a hundred years old, and he is long long life resident here of St. Cloud, and I think we ought to do something for this gentleman also. So that was my two cents. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Matheny, are you? That was it for me. Basically, gonna, we just encourage the staff to take that and run with it and bring us back a recommendation. Is that satisfactory? Yes, yeah. sir. We have consensus. We're good. We will bring you back. And I would certainly say congratulations to that resident who has uh, clicked off 100 years. That's uh, pretty significant. I've had the privilege of recognizing a couple of other residents, and, um, and that is quite significant. Council Member Askew. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I got a couple of things. Uh, one, there's been some confusion, um, and I'm going to bring up accessory structures, but hopefully we can get this um, a little bit. Fix. I've dealt with three myself, one this last week. A lot of houses, matter of fact, in Osceola County, there's 56,000 houses that are under 1,600 square feet. So when we read our ordinance that says 800 square feet or half the size of the house, I'm asking council, maybe we can go, okay, 800 square feet maximum or half the size of your house over 1,600 square feet. What I mean is, is that there's a lot of small houses. I walk the uh, state streets every morning with my wife and there's a lot of houses that are really small that don't have a garage. And if they did have to build one in the case of last week, um, they would have to build a 623 or four square foot um, building, which they already had engineered. And then all they just wanted was 750, which is a normal size garage where you can park in and open up the doors on both their cars without smashing each other. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking council if maybe we can look at that in a way um, I don't want to change it in any other way other than 800 is maximum or half the size of your house over 1,600 square feet. I think that would make that a little bit more clear. And I don't know, uh, the building department would probably have, uh, I think they, I don't know if they agree to that or not, but um, it just seems a little clearer um, and, and it still sticks with that half the size of the house. Thing. There's some houses in here that are 800, 1,100, 1,200 square feet, and then they really can't put a two-car garage in in the backyard. I do not want to change any other part of that. 
uh, ruling, but I was looking for um, some kind of agreements with uh, council if that's something that they could agree to or um, not agree to. I was just trying to make it clear for our citizens. Mr. Manzaris, you have some? Well, just to remind you that that's part of a, a code change that would require a code change uh, to address that issue. And we can we certainly can look at that if that's a consensus of the council. Uh, those individuals, as you're well aware, they do have an opportunity to go in front of Board of Adjustment and seek a variance to build a an accessory structure uh, that side. And I think in that instance, they probably would be justified in getting it. Um, so, um, so, but um, but we can certainly look at that if that's a consensus of the council. Yeah, and in this case, it basically uh, he couldn't build his his structure, so he's going to go ahead and tear down another structure on his property so he can build that structure. It just seems it. it I don't know, this is the third time I've ran into it. Maybe there's a way of, um, I don't know, simple clarification. I, I'm, I would assume um, Deputy Matheny would have some say in this. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Councilmember Matheny? Uh, yeah, I think all of our battling, or my battling, I guess I'll say my battling, um, was more for the monstrosity garages that were being built. So, I mean, I, I think, you, you know, maybe there is some clarification to make, like, yeah, if your house is 800 square feet and then you're like, okay, you get, but I thought it was like up to 800 and like, if you wanted to go more than 800, then it was half of your, half of your home size. I guess I just don't know how it's written. But yeah, my, my battling was like not to have the monster garages. That was, that was my concern. Well, I'd sort of like to see you, you know, if you're going to build a car garage, it needs to be big enough to open up the doors and and uh, be able to move around without damaging your vehicle. And, you know, uh, 600 square feet, that's an awfully small, you might could get a, a beetle bug in there or something, but uh, I, I would sort of be in favor of looking at it as something a little more uh, flexible. Council Member Athene. Thank you. If we're going to look at the language, um, didn't we find that people were like working some kind of loophole and just sticking a, you know, a piece of rebar and touching their house and saying it's attached and then they do whatever they want. So if we could work with the folks that are enforcing these rules to like tighten up on some of the loopholes that, you know, people have been working around. Are there any, any objections to looking into that? I don't hear any Mr. Renzeros. Well, Ms. Mayor, I was going to suggest that a couple of issues came up just tonight with regard to that one code. So it's probably worth staff looking at it, revisiting some of the language on that, and maybe addressing some of the issues. When we had this discussion the first time and adopted this code, uh, we, like a lot of codes, sometimes you got to tweak them before you can get it exactly right. So I think it's probably a good time to circle back and we can look at it to address the two issues that came up tonight and then see what we can do to make the language a little clearer. clearer and work on some of the experiences we've had today. All right, thank you very much. Councilman Rescue. Um, I appreciate uh, council with that. On um, the second part, I was just gonna, and I don't know if um, Chief Gaunt was on here, I was just gonna, um, with all the civil unrest, um, what, what are we doing? And, and Mr. Sturgeon brought up a little bit of it, but are we preparing ourselves? Are we ready? Or is there any changes we're making into the police department? and? Um, I think this town totally is back. Um, our police department, I just, we just always seem to be ahead of the, the curve from cameras on us and things like that. And I don't know if, um, if chief's on or not, if he can kind of enlighten us or maybe the next council meeting kind of, uh, talk about that stuff. I just want to be prepared for if, uh, we do get, um, some activity in the St. Cloud area. Mr. Gauntlet, would you like to speak to that? We would be grateful. Thank you, Mayor. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Askew. Um, if I can start, as you know, um, we look at what's happening on the national level, and there's no more frustration uh, out there than good cops being frustrated at bad cops. And no one can even explain the validity of what happened in Minnesota. It goes against the very grain. What we preach to our staff is to shine the badge, never tarnish it. And uh, what's happened up there is tarnish the badges, but the, the public reaction and the media response has been one of, um, it, it's a tragedy, but at the same time, 
there's a big myth out there that there is systemic police racism around the country. And I will elaborate, if I may, for just a moment. What's estimated at 375 million contacts last year between law enforcement and citizens. And the numbers are minuscule as far as uh, the uses of force and the unfortunate reality of officers having to use deadly force. As you know, we have an incident that's currently under investigation by one of our officers, which is being handled very transparently and very specifically in detail with the, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the state attorney's office to answer a lot of questions that have come in since what's happened on the national scale many of you received something called eight can't wait and it talks about various uh, policy and procedures that are in place as you know we have an accredited agency at a level that is far above the average police agency and our response to resistant policy is a 16 page detailed policy that outlines everything that uh, is mentioned in that documentation the exhaustion of all alternatives prior to any kind of shooting duty to interfere banning shooting towards moving vehicles unless it's life or death force continuum policies proper reporting chokehold limitations and removal de-escalation on and on and on we also have a detailed bias free policing policy and a strong community network and we've been networking with our african-american partners in the community as well and uh, I think that has gone over exceptionally well with our involvement with the NAACP and some of our community leaders to understand the truth of the matter at our level, what has happened here in St. Cloud. The unfortunate reality is we have a lot of ugliness out there and a lot of social media agitation and a lot of things that are created to alarm the public, scare the public and make a lot of internet based threats to our businesses and communities. I can assure you that we are very committed, very capable, and certainly very watchful of everything that goes on in our community. And uh, should there be any actions beyond uh, any type of protest at the police facility, we would take immediate response, not only with our agency, but under mutual aid and coordination with the Sheriff's Office, the Kissimmee Police Department, the Florida Highway Patrol, and any other partners we may need. So as we continue to go forward, we're gonna continue to work with our community and one of the things that Mr. Sturgeon and I have talked about is the ability to potentially set up an advisory type committee um, that would act as a network between the community and, and law enforcement going forward in a very positive way. Not a citizens review board, but a very positive citizens committed advisory committee to talk about current challenges, current issues, and to provide honest and, and set back feedback to our law enforcement officials uh, for now and for the future going forward. Mr. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Askew. I'm all done. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate Chief's uh, insight. Well, I also would like to uh, thank the Chief uh, Gauntlet and all of the officers and the men and women who served in, in the St. Cloud Police Department. Um, uh, I can't even begin to imagine the pressure uh, that you must often feel uh, with all that's been going on, but we certainly appreciate the professional job that uh, the men and women uh, in our police department have done. Um, and uh, thank you for handling all of the uh, protests that have taken place uh, at police headquarters and handling them so well without uh, there being any incident is certainly commendable. Well, I, thank you. I too would be in favor of a citizen's advisory committee. Uh, I wouldn't be in favor of a, of a review board or anything like that. I would be in favor of, a, of an advisory committee and I hope that uh, you'll take a look at that and maybe bring back a recommendation to us on that. I'd also like to uh, thank our city manager for uh, what he did, the moment of silence and then gathered with all the staff that were able to attend and all the police officers and first responders that were there, uh, remembering the sad loss uh, of Mr. Floyd. And I thought it was very commendable, your comments and how that was handled. Uh, thank you so much for your sensitivity. With that, I don't have anything else. We'll come to our information section and report section. 
Thursday, June the 18th, uh, there will be a city council workshop at 6 p.m. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> Thursday, June the 25th, there will be a city council meeting at 6.30 p.m. And that be at the community center. Mr. Sturgeon? Yes, sir, that is correct. We'll meet at the community center for the next several months. All right. With that, uh, remind the council of the warrant list number 13, that report is available for your review. Seeing there's no additional items on our agenda, we will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and all of your participation. Have a wonderful evening. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you.